Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Fowler. American girls. And welcome to Excel Podcast 10.3. Math, math. Three laughs. Hey, that sounds like I need a calculator, and so do you. So get that, and let's hop right into it. So this we're going to refer to 10.1 quite a bit. All right. So when we look right here, this is where we are changing temperature. And when we change temperature, that means that we're going to use the equation Q equals MC delta T. Don't worry about ice right now. Okay? So the water is in the solid phase. This is the specific heat for the solid. And we're going to change the temperature here. Notice these are the temperature changes to go through this. This part right here is where it is melting. If it is melting, it's not going to change temperature. It's going to change the state of matter. And the equation we're going to use here is Q equals M delta H. Q equals M delta H fuzz. The fusion means that it's melting. So fusion means melting or um, freezing. Okay. Here, this part right here, water's in the liquid phase. Okay. So this is the enthalpy of fusion, by the way. Um, the specific heat of water, don't worry about the P, we're just called C. Uh, the amount of energy needed to heat or cool the water is determined by the following formula, Q equals mic delta T. By the way, the M stands for mass. That would probably help, wouldn't it? C is specific heat. Triangle stands for change. And T stands for temperature. Okay. Here, we're not changing temperature, we're changing the state of matter, and this is the enthalpy of vaporization. So the equation is going to be, this says moles, which isn't right for us, it's going to be Q equals M delta H that. Okay. The last part, water's in the gas phase. So the equation is going to be mic delta T, MC gas delta T. So there are two equations to go through this. So changing temperature changes the kinetic energy. Okay? Temperature and kinetic energy are the same. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Temperature is the average kinetic energy. And if you're changing the temperature, your equation is Q equals mic delta T. And Q is heat in joules or calories. And M is mass in grams, sometimes moles, but probably very rarely moles. Specific heat is in joules per gram degree Celsius or calories per gram degree Celsius. And delta T is change in temperature in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. The specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Degree. How much energy would it take to convert 125 grams of water from 5 to 73? Okay. Notice I'm only changing temperature, not the state of matter. I do expect you to know that water freezes at zero and boils at 100. Okay. Or melts at zero and condenses at 100. So Q equals mic delta T. We're looking for energy, which is Q. My mass is 125. Specific heat, which will be given most of the time, 4.18. Change in temperature is the difference between 73 and 5, which would be 68. Ask your calculator. 125 times 4.18 times 68. And you get 35,530. And that would come out in joules. Now, I want to warn you, um, notice these numbers have three sig figs, three sig figs, two sig figs. So my answer here would be 36,000 joules. Okay. I know that looks like one, but when you do this part, then you re-round. Just go with me on that. 125 grams of gold is heated from 5 degrees Celsius to 73 degrees Celsius. It takes 225 joules. I'll make that a semicolon so my grammar's better. Find the specific heat. So again, I'm not changing state of matter. I'm only changing temperature. Q equals mic delta T. 125 grams is my mass, 125. 5 to 73, that's the that same delta T, which is 68. It takes 225 joules. Joules is my unit for energy, which is Q, 225. And I'm solving for the specific heat. So if I solve for that, C equals 225 over 125, 
and 68. So on my calculator, I type 225 divided by 125 divided by 68. Enter, and I get 0 0.026 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I run it two sig figs again. Three, three, two. Specific heat is an intensive property. You can use it to identify things. So if I know the specific heat of something, I can look up the specific heat and find its identity. That's kind of nifty. So knowing that that means that gold, all gold, has a specific heat of 0 0.0265 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I know it's whatever. You get the idea. Heat of vaporization slash fusion. It takes potential energy to change the state of matter. So remember, that's energy position. Potential energy is the energy position. Bonds forming get closer, breaking get farther. Um, Q equals M delta H fuzz. That's if you freeze or melt. Q equals M delta H vap if you boil or condense. The heat of vaporization of acetone, which is nail polish remover, used to be anyway, is 7.25 kilocalories per mole. Oh, man, kilocalories. That's kill killing me. So if I see 7.25 kilocalories per mole, oh, man, what I'm going to do is change this into calories per gram right away because this is in grams. Okay. So how much energy is released if 75.2 grams of acetone condenses at its boiling point? Why does it say released? Because you're condensing. Gases have more energy than liquids, so it's going to be released. And then at its boiling point, what that means is change state, not change temperature. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is 7.25 kilocalories per mole. And I know if I want to make it calories, that's going to be three decimal places over, right? So it's going to be 7250 calories per mole. And acetone, which is C3H6, times dividing by, I want to cancel moles. One mole of C3H6 and grams of C3H6. Little g stands for grams, little g stands for go to the periodic table. So 12.01 times 3 plus 6.06 .06 for those is 42.09. And you get 72.50 divided by 42.09, and it's 172 calories per gram. OK, so now I finally get to do this problem. Q equals M delta H. Because it's at the boiling point, it's VAP. Okay. The mass is 75.2. Heat of vaporization is 172. 75.2 times 172 is 12934. I better check my sig figs, which is 3, which would be 12900 uh, more in calories. 12,900 calories. The mother of all equations. Woo! How much energy does square card change? 5 grams of water from minus 15 to 135. Use the info from the sheet, which um, is on your worksheet. I hope I give it to you in class. So what we're going to do is if I start at minus 15, I'm going to warm up until a good stopping place. One nine fifteen is going to be solid for water, and that's going to turn to zero degrees Celsius, which is ice. At zero degrees Celsius ice, it turns into zero degrees Celsius liquid. That's melting to you and me, Russ. Zero degrees Celsius liquid is going to turn to a hundred degrees Celsius liquid, and a hundred degrees Celsius liquid is going to turn to a hundred degrees Celsius gas. That's boiling, and a hundred degrees Celsius gas is going to turn to one hundred and thirty-five degrees Celsius gas. Okay? So every arrow that I've drawn here is going to require an equation. So Q, which is my heat, is going to be the first part right here. It's going to be MC delta T. Why? Changing temperature. Plus, this next part is melting, solid to liquid. M delta H, solid to liquid, is melting fusion plus 
liquid to liquid. That's changing temperature. Nick delta T. Liquid to gas is boiling. That's not changing temperature. M delta H boiling would be vaporization. And now I'm changing temperature again for gas. Mc delta T. Now I apologize. I don't have memorized the numbers for um, joules, which I think is what your chart says. I only have memorized calories, and I forgot to, to look at that sheet. So I'm going to do this in calories. So please forgive me. It's the same thing. Substitute your joule number, which should be on your sheet to do this. So five grams of water. So my mass is going to be five for all of these. The specific heat of ice on my sheet is 0.5. Change in temperature from minus 15 to 0 is 15. Plus, my mass is still 5. It will always be 5. The heat of fusion of ice in calories is 80. Remember, we're using calories because that's all Mr. Valley has, remem has remembered. That's it, and has memorized. Plus, the mass down at a liquid, right? So my mass is still 5 grams. Specific heat of liquid water is 1. Change in temperature from 0 to 100 is 100. Now I have boiling. Mass of water is still 5. Heat of vaporization of water is 540 calories per gram. Plus, last phase change. 5 grams still. Specific heat of water for steam is 0.5. And change in temperature is 100 to 135, which is 35. So I get out my calculator, and because I'm used to a bad calculator, I'm going to show the steps underneath here. 5 times 0.5 times 15 is 37.5, plus 5 times 80, I'm not hitting the plus part yet, is 400, plus 5 times 100, I don't need a calculator for that one. Yeah, I feel smart. 5 times 540 is 2,700. Plus 5 times 0.5 times 35 is 87 and a half. And when I add those up, and I sorted them out that way because I was afraid I'd type it in my calculator incorrectly. 37.5 plus 400 plus 500 plus 2700 plus 87.5. Rounding to, well, my numbers have three, well, two sig figs, I guess. Uh, yeah, my decimal, my temperature's coming to two sig figs would be. 3,700 calories. That's a long one. That's as hard as I can make it. In class, we're going to do a heat exchange lab. And we're going to do this online, and we're going to do it in re for real life, too. So basically, what's going to happen is I'm going to have water in here. Well, you can't read that, can you? Let me change that to a color. Maybe we can read H2O in here. And I'm going to have a chunk of, hunk of, hunk of metal. And it's going to be hot metal. And it's going to be cold water. Cold! water. And we'll drop the hot metal into the cold water. And what's going to happen is the cold water is going to get warmer. And the hot metal is going to get cooler until they reach thermal equilibrium, meaning they're the same temperature. And we can do some calculations for that. That device is called a calorimeter. Hey, look, calorie, that's a heat unit. Meter means it measures things. Do hot things transfer heat or cold things transfer cold? Hot things transfer heat. The heat absorbed equals the heat released. So the heat released by the metal, this will be the metal, will equal the heat absorbed by the water. That's water. So what this means is mc delta T of the metal is going to equal mc delta T of the water. The C of the water is known. Remember, the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, which is why we use water. In real life, we use a styrofoam cup instead of this thing. Now, scientists would use one of those things because it's super insulated and we don't lose heat anywhere else. But we are citizen scientists, so we use styrofoam cups. So our lab does what? We boil metal, so we put them in boiling water to get them to be roughly 100 degrees Celsius. So we throw it in boiling water for five minutes or so so that our metal is 100 degrees. Then we put them in cold water of a known temperature, of a known mass. The metal gets colder, which is hard to measure the inside temperature of the metal. The water gets warmer until it reaches thermal equilibrium. We so we have a thermometer in our little cup. And watch the temperature change. Can we figure out the change in temperature of the metal? It is 100 to the final T. Change temperature of the water, which is the cold water to the final temperature again. 
two ways q equals mc delta t. So q equals mc delta t for the water, red water. Substitute q for mc delta t of the metal. Okay, and that's basically what we're going to do. Errors, if you want all of your heat to go from the metal to go to the water, where will the metal lose heat besides the cool water? Well, you have to take it out of the boiling water, and it's exposed to the air. And you pick it up with tongs, not thongs, tongs, so it could lose some heat there. If you lose heat, what does that do to the calculated C of the metal? So what happens is you lose heat, then delta T of water is too small, right? Because it doesn't get all, some of the heat goes into the air or someplace else. So if delta T of the water is too small, then Q of the water is too small. And if Q of the water is too small, then when I do Q equals MC delta T of the metal, right? If that Q is too small, then I solve for C. If that Q is too small, then what happens is um, C is too small. And that is, I think, it. Woohoo! So we need to have memorized deep down in our heart, Q equals, and my lazy self makes delta T, and Q equals M delta H, and this is change in temperature, this is change in state. And that's called calorimetry. So we're all done. Get another one down. Toodles.